Hello, thank you for joining us today on this video. I'm going to be covering something referred to as solar array simulation, and it's used when testing PV inverters without having to use an actual solar panel or solar array as the input power. We do it by uh, incorporating into a DC power supply uh, a method of simulating an actual solar array. To uh, better understand how we do that, uh, we'll go through a brief description of what a solar cell used to create modules, panels, and arrays uh, would look like uh, a typical or equivalent circuit is what you see in figure one. And there's two devices, RS, uh, which is a equivalent series resistance, and RSH, which is the equivalent shunt resistor. These two resistances are critical because as current is developed, an output from the solar panel or the solar cell, it has a limited ability to produce uh, maximum current limited by the series resistance. There's also a limit to the maximum voltage, which is determined by the shunt resistor. Another thing, of course, that uh, determines how much power a solar cell or solar panel or solar array can output is the amount of irradiation from the sun, and that's measured in watts per meter squared. Also, there's a uh, different types of solar cells. There's monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and thin film, and they have different, uh, what's referred to as a fill factor, which is a ratio of absolute power versus real maximum power. So you can see the monocrystalline has a higher number, 0.8, which means it's a more efficient and uh, uh, a better solar cell or solar panel construction that gives you more power output. Um, the ambient temperature uh, focused on the solar cells or around the solar panels uh, is also a big effect on how much power you can output. Solar cells prefer to be operated at cooler temperatures, so as the ambient temperature increases, the uh, power efficiency decreases. There's panel specifications. Uh, there's some parameters uh, that are specific for uh, defining solar panels. Uh, there's a short circuit current and open circuit voltage. There's a current at maximum power, a voltage at maximum power, and then the maximum power output rating itself. These parameters can be used uh, in an algorithm to create what's known as a uh, voltage and current or an IV curve and a power and voltage or PV curve. And we're going to go in that on the next slide. So when you look at this, uh, this graph that I'm showing here, the red line shows what we refer to as the IV curve. It starts all the way up at the maximum current, which is would be an absolute short circuit of the uh, solar panel's output, and that would be referred to as short circuit current. With no load applied to the solar panel, it, out, it produces an open circuit voltage. And these two points uh, create this curve based on an algorithm created by Sandia and by European EN 50530 standards. There's also a, an equivalent uh, PV curve, and this uh, uses the power versus voltage to determine the maximum power point. So this uh, is how we can actually operate the output of our power supply to simulate an actual solar panel or solar array. Our 62,000H family of power supplies uh, can do this very nicely. Uh, there are uh, 5, 10, and 15 kilowatt versions of this unit. They go all the way up to 1,000 volts, can be put in series up to 1,800 volts, and they can be put in parallel to create up to 1.5 megawatts of total power. These units are used as the input power to an actual uh, PV inverter uh, to simulate the solar panel. So when you look at the inverter or PV inverter specification, it has some uh, definite uh, definitions for maximum usable DC power. It also has a maximum power point operating voltage range. It also has a maximum operating input current. So with this setup that I'm going to run, uh, I'm going to use 2,000 watts as my maximum power. I'm going to use 300 volts as our voltage at maximum power, and I'm going to use 6.75 amps as the current at maximum power. I've uh, started a video running here that will show you a live demonstration of this unit. Uh, what we have here is the con 
configuration or choice output mode. And with that, you can select nine, which is the output mode settings. There's also a selection for solar array simulation. When you select solar array simulation mode, it's going to give you the ability to input these different parameters for open circuit voltage. We'll set that to 350. We're going to set the short circuit current to a maximum of 7 amps, 7.5 amps. And then we're going to set the maximum voltage setting for maximum power to 300 volts. And then we're going to set the maximum power current to 6.5 uh, 75 amps. Once we've put these parameters in, the unit will actually go in and create that IV curve and all the data points uh, that create that curve and import that into our digital signal processor that controls the output of our power supply. Once we've done that, we can connect uh, the unit to the inverter input and then we can press the output button. And from there, you'll see that when we run the output by hitting Execute, it'll uh, give us the uh, voltage and current at maximum power. It'll also show the parameters that we use to set it. It'll tell us the output is on. And it'll give us the equivalent power of 2,025 watts and equivalent voltage at maximum power and equivalent current at maximum power as well. This is a, a way you can capture all the data to prove that how well your inverter is working. It also determines how well the maximum power point tracking mechanism built into the actual uh, PV inverters is uh, able to determine the power available from the solar panel, or in this case, our solar array simulator, and also to adjust its output accordingly so that it gets a continuous flow at maximum power for that unit. There's another way to do this instead of manually operating it. We offer software and with the software we can uh, do even a more advanced uh, operation of the output. We can do the, uh, the typical IVPV curve that we talked about. We can manually control that uh, from the soft panel here that you see. We can change also other uh, features and parameters such as the irradiation level to simulate the amount of uh, solar radiation from the sun. We can change and uh, simulate different ambient temperatures that would also affect the maximum output efficiency power from the uh, from the uh, solar panel that we're simulating. We can do maximum power simulation and fill factor simulation as well. We can also do something that's referred to as shadow curves. Uh, during the day or course of a day, a solar panel may have anything from a shadow from a device or a tree or from anything else that might cast a shadow onto a part of the solar panel. It could even be clouds coming over that would block the sun. So we can create those variations in the, the uh, curves and output power accordingly uh, from our power supply to feed that to the input of the PV inverter. We can also even do it as a moving, like a moving cloud or a moving shadow. As the sun moves, the shadow would change. As the cloud moves, again, the shadow over the PV inverter, uh, over the solar panels would change as well. So we can simulate that with our software. We can also do what's called maximum power point dynamic testing. And we can do that a couple of different ways. We can create multiple curves at different power levels. and. Uh, time those at different time intervals to uh, input that. We can do this to actually test the response time of the uh, PV inverters maximum power point tracking. We can also use real data uh, of uh, solar radiation levels and temperatures that can be downloaded from different sites, uh, mostly through some of our national labs out there, uh, collect this kind of data and you can import that and uh, load it into the software and create real-time, uh, real data uh, with uh, IV curves. Let us know if there's anything here that I've shown you that you're interested in. Please give us a call. Uh, contact us on the web. Thank you for viewing it, and uh, I hope, uh, hope this has been helpful.